We give you the praise. We thank you. We bless you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for those testimonies. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for saving a life. Thank you for the people you surrounded her with. Thank you for your angels moved and they made things come to pass. Thank you for everything. We worship you. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. And as we worship, build your throne. Come on, Lord Jesus, and take your place. And as we worship, and as we worship you, your and as we worship, and as we worship you, Lord, as we dedicate this moment unto you. Release your faith and ask God for something. That thing that looks impossible. Lift up your voice in faith and ask him for anything. One of the meanings of asking is demanding. Demand. That thing that you are planning to see someone about on Monday. Ask him. Now begin to call it forth. If you are a believer, call it forth. Say, I receive this, I receive that. If it's your, your health, declare for that thing to go that you don't want. Declare for that thing to come that you want. After asking God, speak to the moon to stand. Speak to the sun to stand. Some things you are tolerating are oppression of the enemy. Command it to go. Now begin to give thanks. If you know you have received answers to your prayers, begin to give thanks. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Hallelujah. Why don't you celebrate Jesus appropriately? Walk up to three people, tell them something will happen to you in this service you will discover later.
Walk up to three people. Come on. Almighty God. I wish I could dance like you. There's no one like you. You reign forever. Almighty God. Almighty God. All powerful God. Almighty God. All powerful God. You are worthy to receive all our praise. You reign forever. Somebody shout to the Lord. Seated, God bless you. Hallelujah. God bless you. Love you right back. We've been sharing, hallelujah. We've been sharing powerfully on open heavens. Because this month God told us we will enjoy open doors. What makes, and I encourage you to buy all those tips because I can recap. But there's a question in my spirit. Not theoretically. Actively, vitally, what makes Christians experience short heavens, short doors. Why? There are many reasons, but this morning we're going to deal with one reason. Lack of faith. Lack of faith. In Hebrews 11 verse 32, Hebrews 11, verse 32. And what more shall I say, for time would fail me, to tell of Gideon, Barak, and Samson, and Jephthah, and also David, and Samuel, and the prophets. These guys, through faith, somebody said through faith, they subdued the kingdoms. They shot the kingdom of hell down. They appeared and they shut down hell through faith. The Bible says through faith, they walked righteousness. The benefits of being born again was apparent upon them through faith. They obtained promises through faith. So if you're not subduing kingdoms, faith may be, lack of faith may be the reason why you're not subduing kingdoms. If you're not walking righteousness, we can see the evidence of your being born again upon you, upon your business, upon your life. It may be a lack of faith. They obtain promises. We are not obtaining promises. Or the promises of God is not apparent upon your marriage, upon your life, upon your business, upon your career. It may be lack of faith. They stopped the Mount of Lions. Lions do not come to play games with you. <laughs> they want to eat you. They stopped the mouth of lion by faith. Verse 34. They quenched fire. It's not around to play with you. It's there to burn you and change your skin and to, 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 to render you useless, to wreck your uniform, to wreck your clothes, your skin, your facade. But they quenched <laughs> by faith. They escaped the edge of the sword. What should have killed you? <laughs> Escape. Out of weaknesses were made strong. You saw that sister that stood up by listening to God's word. Faith comes by hearing. By faith, they became valiant in battle. Some people think when you walk by faith, there's no battle. No. There's something, there's such a thing as being valiant 
in battle. I love this one. By faith, they turned the, to flight the armies of the... Something came at them. They turned them to flight by faith. 35. We're going to read 35 together. Ready, read. By faith, women received their dead. Others were tortured, not accepting deliverance. They might... Hallelujah. If you look at Ephesians 6, 16, Bible says, above all, take in. Above all, take in the shield of faith, which gives you the ability to quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. So when the enemy is concocting their darts, God is not perturbed because he expects that the children, of, the children of God will operate by faith. And anything they spent all night to do in the witch coven, they mentioned your neighbor, put your photographs somewhere. They, they went into, into, into a cauldron to do something. You just quench everything by faith. All by faith. All by faith. Peter, Simon, Simon, uh, Satan asked for you. But I pray for you. Not that it will not attack you, but your faith will not fail. Because if your faith does not fail, you will recover. And when you are recovered, then encourage others to walk by faith. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, anybody, because doubt is not your friend, anybody walking in fear and doubt ends this morning. Amen. Ah, can your, can your amen be faith filled? Can you shout amen you are, like you are about to receive something? In the name of Jesus. Faith is not only for obtaining things. It was the faith that people operated in that guaranteed their good reports from the Lord. We're not talking about good reports from men. You can manipulate men to get them to say good things about you. But God, with him all things are naked. God knows your end from the beginning. He knows the things you hide from people. Bible says by faith, they obtained a good report, a good testimony. In Hebrews 11 verse 1, I want to read from verse 1 to 3, then I will go to verse 8. Now faith is a substance of things opt for, the evidence of things not seen. The word substance is the combination of two words, sub and stance, hypostatis, what you're standing on. So with this, we know that faith is not positive thinking. It's not, it go better somehow, it go better. No. Faith is something. It is what you stand, it's so solid. It's something you're standing on. To know that you have a future. To know that things will be better. To know that your marriage will be better. To know that your career shall go on forward. Oh, I love the testimony. The lady, one of the ladies that spoke, I think is the, 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 the sister of the person God gave victory, said she kept on declaring God's word. And she mentioned that she kept on declaring, Proverbs 4, 18, that the path of the just is like a shining light. It doesn't look like healing scriptures, but you can't die and your path will be like a shining light. <laughs> that shines ever brighter until the perfect day. That was what she was standing on. Child of God, what, what are you standing on? The Bible says in Hebrews 11 verse 1, faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you have it in your life, you don't hope for it. So we're talking about things you are believing God for. The evidence, the word evidence is the Greek word elenko. The evidence, the proof. Now, you don't need to show me, you don't need to carry around a land in Guagualada and say, hey, I want to sell land though. What do you go around with? The evidence, the document. The moment you have the landed document, finish. They check. Oh, it's real. That's the evidence of things. I've not seen the land. Not seen. So the Bible is the evidence. The word of God is the evidence that you are more than conqueror. That you are the head and not the tail. So that's what we stand on. Until you begin to engage that, you are not walking by faith. You can engage that when you don't believe that God does not lie. 
The Bible says faith is the evidence of things hoped for, um, the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. In verse 2, the Bible says, for by it, for by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. Let's read many versions. Uh, Amplified version, verse 2. The Bible says, for by faith, trust, and only favor, born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony, born to them and obtained good reports. To please God, you can't please God without faith. To have a good report, for God to be impressed with you, for God to think, mm, this person is different in his family, this person is different in our family, you need to engage faith. In verse 3, the Bible says, in verse 3, because of time you can read many versions, but by faith we understand that the worlds were framed. The word frame is the word katatizo. In other words, structured by the word of God. So without the word of God, you can't operate by faith. So that the things which are seen, your car, your children, your family, your clothes, your degree, they were actually, they came, they came out of things that are not visible, which is the word of God. So in the beginning was the word. When I see that you begin to engage in one aspect, I know the things I will see in your life. Faith is the substance of things, oh for the evidence of things must sin. So if you don't believe that God does not lie, there's no way you can walk by faith. If you ask me to substantiate a word with faith, I will call it obedience. Because without obedience, there's no way you can walk by faith. You have to take action based on what God has said. Then it is said that you're walking by faith. It's not positive thinking. It's not thinking, mm, somehow, three generations cannot go down the drain. Four generations can go down. Because it's easy to go in a cycle than to break the cycle. I pray in the name of Jesus. Somebody here, you'll break a cycle. Amen. In your family, you'll be the first. Amen. Mark my lips, you'll be the first. Amen. You'll be the first. Amen. Why? The word of God gives you an advantage. Not your degree. Believe me when I tell you that. Because the devil will not train you to have deliverance in school. You can have a good job, have a high pay, and still be broke. I'm telling you. There's somebody who spoke to me that every time they pay them extra money at work, somebody will seek in the village. <laughs> that will take the money. Something will happen. You see that their car breaks down or they stole the wife's car. Something will happen. So, the thing some of you are pursuing is not the real solution. If I want to change what was written on this screen, I don't scratch the screen. I go to the source. What you need to do is not to come to, to, to church every time the door of the church is open. Oh, I'm a COSA member. You know, since I moved to Guzapé, I started attending COSA. Since they started planting branches, it's just beside my house. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you. Start engaging faith. I've been born again for the past 20 years. It's not what I'm talking about. Start engaging faith. Because without faith, you can't get results. It was by it the elders obtained good reports. Now in verse 4 of Hebrews 11, verse 4, Hebrews 11, by faith, Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. In case you've been sacrificing, I just do my thing and go away. I just do my thing and go away. I just do my bait and go away. That's not what God requires from you. Anything you don't do by faith becomes nothing. Becomes nothing. In Hebrews 13, uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, 1 Corinthians 13, verse 1, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, and I have not love, I have become. You see, that's what you've become. The word become is ginoai. You've changed state. you become a sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. Pastor Biodo, what is the word love here? Look at me, everybody. Are you following me or you, you left the building? 
If you love me, do what I say. No wonder Galatians chapter 5 verse 6. I'm coming back to this 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1. Galatians 5 verse 6. It says, for in Christ Jesus, there is neither circumcision nor circumcision. That avails to nothing. Oh, I'm from Mekiti. Oh, I relate to pastor. Oh, I took a picture with him. Oh, uh, I knew when Jesus Christ came to the earth. You know, I came the second time. It doesn't avail to anything. But faith works through love. What is love? Obedience. If you don't understand that, your faith will be dead. For there to be dead faith, there is living faith. So, very thin line be be between religiosity and Christianity. Very thin line. You think you're operating the Bible Christianity, but sometimes you may be religious. Oh yeah, I go to church every time. Oh, I pay my tithe. Oh yeah, I'm a partner. <laughs> if you don't operate by love, faith will not work. If you don't operate by faith, you can't have a good testimony. And what is love? If you love me, do what I say. Have you been there before that you said, yes, this is what the Bible says, but this is what I think. You are there. You are the one I'm talking to. This is what the Bible says, but you know, even God knows that Nigeria is different. <laughs> Nigeria is different. You know, this present, you know the Bible was written many years ago, thousands of years ago. Do you know what happens right now? This is 2024. Wake up. Wake up. How can you be using a cake Bible written forever, O oh Lord, your word? You cannot obey God until you know who God is. And when I'm talking about knowing God, I'm not talking about knowing about God. I'm not talking about just knowing something. Even you can be talking about God and not know who God is. If you don't know that God can never let you down, there's a way you will not behave, even though you are a Christian. You will have that philosophy that says that heaven helps those who help themselves. You want to help yourself all the time. And let me tell you something about God. If you want to help yourself, they are the sect of people that don't get helped. God wants you to totally depend on him for everything. Have you been there where you, you saw a couple walking into a church or your office and you're wondering, do men see at all? How did this man ask that woman out? What is this scene? It's called grace. Or vice versa. How did this woman agree? Well, this man must have money. Sometimes it's not like that. It's not like that. Sometimes. Someone like me, <laughs> I'm sure that when I was single, if I asked you out, you would have said no. <laughs> By the way, you judge things. It says don't judge anything before it's time. I pray in the name of Jesus that you not be wise in your own eyes. Yeah. May God help you. May God help you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you don't know that God cannot trick you into a bad situation, there is no way you can obey Him. There is no way you can obtain good report. There are a lot of people, lots of people that have been saved for a long time, but this trust issue. They only do things that they feel they are saved. They calculate and see the end and say, okay, we can do it. I'm talking about you taking a risk with God. And there's no day you not take a risk with God. When you die, you lose control. At last master, it was borrowed. Your certificate was borrowed. Your brain was borrowed. Your eyes were borrowed. Everything, you will let go. I've been in an MRI machine before. My God. I had an experience how to be in a coffin. Somebody gave me a call. Somebody submitted to me. He said his father passed for some minutes. And the man woke up and said, "Ah, why are you guys around? He knew nothing. You want everything to be in place. You want to know what is happening before you do it, before you follow God. But when people die, they know nothing. Sometimes you forget that you, 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 you give back to children. The things you are holding on to, you will not even remember anymore. 
That's why you must learn from now to move your faith to trust. Because there's no way you can impress God or have good report. Forget about you uh, having a facade in church. Forget about, I'm talking about you obey what God says without questioning it. You enter into another dimension with God. First John chapter 3, verse 22. Hallelujah. First John. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him. Because, my God. Somebody say, because. Not because we are fair, not because we are tall. Because we keep His command and we do those things that are pleasing in His sight. Not in the sight of people, in His sight. You know, you are really who you are when nobody is looking, not in church. This is New Testament scripture that whatever we ask, we receive. Why? You know that whatever you ask, you don't receive. You only receive the things that you ask in line with God's will. When you keep His commandment, you are on the same frequency with God. And when you, what you ask will be what He wants for you. I pray in the name of Jesus, your thoughts will not be demonic. Amen. God will guide your discretions. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. To, take, to please God, to take a stand for God, you must first of all believe that God is faithful. In Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 9, therefore, know that the Lord, your God, number one, he is God. God was not made for you, you were made for God. He is God. Some of you, as long as God performs, uh -huh, say, God, you know, they, you know they treat me, like you butter my bread, you sugar my tea. You. That's for babies. As time goes on, you begin to take responsibilities as a child of God. I don't even know where to face right now. It's getting deeper, this message. Therefore, know that the Lord, your God, he is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant. What is covenant? Dahatiki. You have a part, God has a part. Wake up. Please wake up. Please. There's a new testament. The word testament is Dahatiki. Covenant. New agreement. You have a part to play, God has a part to play. It's not all about God. But on his part, he keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations to those who love him and those who keep his commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. Okay? Don't tear that part out of the Bible. This is true. It's possible nobody taught you, but in case you've been asking questions, why are things not working? Why is it that God of the book of Acts is not real anymore? Has God gone to sleep? This is what you need to put in place. Hallelujah, somebody. Oh, can you shout hallelujah? God will never cajole you to be in trouble. God will never talk you. So, so, some, somebody say, uh, you know, if I wasn't a Christian, look at my age right now, I'm not married. My other cousin, that is a non-believer, she's married. I know what she did. I know what my mates are doing. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Don't choose like a supermarket. You choose God's will. You leave some part and you come back and blame God. Your obedience is actually inched on the fact that you believe in God. In Exodus chapter 5, verse 2, I wish I could tell you I've started the message. <laughs> I just want the message to sit on the right foundation. Are you alive? When Moses was sent to Pharaoh, please listen close now. When they got to Pharaoh, now you need to know that Pharaoh is dead, but his spirit is alive. Because whatever heaven releases or hell releases, he doesn't take back. He stays on earth. Uh, Jezebel is gone, but the spirit is here. The Bible says John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. Elijah was dead, but the spirit is here. Talk to me, somebody. So Pharaoh is gone, but that spirit, that says, let the children of Israel go, but don't let them go far. He's still around. That spirit that says, okay, let the older men go. Let their children stay. He's still around. 
So you see, older men, the moment you get to 40, you become responsible. But the Bible says, remember the Lord in the days of your youth. You become irresponsible. You're, you don't even think straight. After you've used the dopamine, every, the strength of your youth to save the devil, then you come back and go to one theology school. <laughs> I walk like that and say, Jesus, I'm here, I'm here, Lord, I'm here. God says, no. Check the Bible. Apart from Moses, everybody God called, he called them when they were teenagers. Apart from Moses that started at 80, he called them three Hebrew children, Samuel. Check the Bible all through. He called them when they were young. Therefore, redeem the time. Don't waste time anymore. Redeem the Buy back the time. So when God sent Moses to Pharaoh, look at the question Pharaoh asked. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? Now, he called him Lord, but he said, who is he? There are people in church who have the same questions. Who is the Lord that will tell me who to get married to? Who is the Lord that will tell me what I will use my money to do? Who is the Lord? that will tell me not to sleep and to pray. Who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice. The reason, see, what he says for you to do is not as important as the reason why you do it. It is the reason why you didn't do it that puts people in trouble. This question, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? Forget, you are not letting any Israel go. But who is that God that will say, I should do this in my relationship in 21st century? Wake up, pastor. Stay woke, pastor. <laughs> I do not know the Lord. Now will I let Israel go? Jesus said, why do you say Lord, Lord to me and you don't do what I say? If you are going to walk in obedience, you have to first of all settle the issue of trust. We spent some years before we had our first daughter. I loved her so much. I could play with her. <laughs> I could throw, I used to throw her up and I would run away and run to catch her. And this girl would be laughing. <laughs> she was never scared one day. Why? She trusted me. I hope that now that she's grown, she says, trust me that way. <laughs> That's why the Bible says if you don't have a faith, if you don't have faith like a child, you can't end. Because children trust. You see, children play with snakes. They don't even see, they don't know any evil. Have you been there when your mother was fighting your neighbor and you went to eat? <laughs> children don't. <laughs> children don't. They're thinking, mommy, wow, you've not forgiven your friend. I saw you the other day, you were laughing with your friend. Now you are telling me not to eat. Why were you doing that? Children don't understand that. At the embassies, Interviewers face children. What are you going to do? How, how long are you going to stay? Because they know children don't lie. <laughs> you can lie. But children don't lie because they are innocent. They, are, they, they just see things plainly. Are you following what I'm saying? <laughs> Have you told your child that you are traveling before? Don't tell anybody. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uncle, can I trust you with something? You don't have a faith. You do not have faith like a child. You can't enter into some things. The fruit of knowledge of good and evil. What is wrong with that fruit? When you begin to, on your own, know that this is good, this is evil. On your own. Know what God says. Adam, Adam, where are you? He said, oh, I heard your voice and I was afraid I was naked and I hid. You know what God said? Who told you? You started receiving information from something else. God designed you to receive information from him and to believe what he tells you. Genesis 3 verse 1. Quickly. Oh, I wish I had time. I need to run. Now the serpent was more cunning than all the beasts of the field which the Lord had made. And he said to the woman, as God indeed said. Anytime you ask that kind of question, God has said it, but does he really mean that stuff? In fact, give me the Living Bible Translation or NLT. Genesis 3 verse 1. <laughs> so the serpent came to the woman. Really? 
You see, when you have that really mentality, you think, oh, I went to school. Uh, look, you can't tell that to, you can say that to illiterates, not me. You think the devil will educate you, set up a system to make you believe in God? What are you saying? Science is preoccupation. I apologize to those who are science-driven. But science's preoccupation is not to extol God, it's to take God out. Everything they are doing in a subtle way is to make you believe that God does not exist. I had a chat with my last son. I said, what do you believe about evolution? He said, really, 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 daddy. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe that we came out of monkeys. I just believe that monkeys came out of us. I said, he said, I said, I said to him, what do you mean? He said, I just believe that people just went crazy. <laughs> They just became monkeys. I said, that, that's reasonable. But for you to think I came from monkeys, no. <laughs> Some people went monkeys. <laughs> He's 11 years old, and they've been teaching him to align his brain to a star. So for you to think, and you, you're talking through your nose, you, you, you think you are, yeah, I'm intelligent. They, a piece of paper tells you you have a... Uh, uh, they give you a piece of paper, 9 over 10, you have high IQ. Somebody told you you have high IQ. Why is it that those who pass in your school, they are not successful right now? Because the real examiners are on the street. They're on the street. So don't look down on yourself because somebody with a piece of paper, ma some people are drunk where they are marking your script. And I'm not saying that you are, you are brilliant in school. <laughs> but some things they taught us in school, you really don't need them. I don't even know where to face right now. So anytime you feel really, he asks, really? The first question in the Bible, this happened, asked it. Really? That mentality, really? I just think, I just think, when you are thinking like that, you can't obey God's word. Never. You can only pretend. You can please somebody mentoring you. A man has tried in my life. Let me just obey for a while. When you have that really question, none of the fruits in the garden, God says, you mustn't have. I've eaten any of it. See how he twisted what God said. The word cosmos is the Greek word for a system set up after this. It's the system of the devil's kingdom to take God out. Beware. When Adam went against what God said, God did not discuss the devil with him because the devil was inconsequential. As long as you do God's word, the devil is non-existent. The devil also came and knew that what shut him out was basically what God told Adam and Eve. He said, what, what has God said? Inside what God has said, because his instructions protect you from destructions. Somebody shout obedience. Yes. I cannot say I walk by faith if I'm not walking by obedience. In Numbers 23, 19, the Bible says God is not a man that he should lie or son of man that he should repent. The Bible says he has said it and he will he not do it. The Bible says he has spoken. Will he not make it good? In 1 Samuel 15, 20, 29. Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, 29. And also the strength of Israel will not lie or relent. For he is not a man that he should relent. Pray in the name of Jesus that our revelation will be real in your life. Amen. Men don't have the capacity not to flung to it. So somehow we put God in that, in that address of someone that flung to it. God does not flung to it. He's the father of lights with whom there's no variableness, neither a shadow of turn. In Luke chapter 21 verse 33, the Bible says heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. His word is something you can rely on. And you see, if you look at uh, someone like, if you look at that Hebrews 11 verse 8, the Bible says by faith, Hebrews 11 verse 8, the Bible says by faith, Abraham obeyed 
when he was called by faith. Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to the place which he would receive as an inheritance. He went out not knowing where he was going. You see, you, you look at this statement and say, uh -huh, by what, 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 what is the big deal about that? You don't appreciate Abraham's obedience until you understand where Abraham was coming from. You can't appreciate his obedience. Because here was referring to Genesis 12. But Abraham did not start from Genesis 12. Bible talks about him before Genesis 12. Now, one thing about Abraham that made me really, really trick for his obedience was basically because Abraham did not operate with uh, corporate obedience. I've been a pastor for a while. People find it easy when it's comp corporate obedience. Okay, we are all fast. By the way, we're fasting from tomorrow. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll come to church. I told you on the first Sunday, you remember? That when God gives us the matching order, we'll just start. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. We'll come to church in the evening. We'll pray together and we'll break the fast. You must experience open doors this year. In the name of Jesus. Very easy to do when we are fasting together. When we are fasting. Have you been, you know, the first ASO strike that I remember happened when I was in school. Five months, then eight months. I did not feel bad for one day. I was happy. Eight, five months, first of all, then eight months. I was happy. I think that was in 1993 or 1994 or something. Or 1992. I was very happy. It was a time where we had party outside the school. We had several things that we did outside the school. Because I wasn't the only one that was in the school. If they suspended one person, ah, the person would feel bad that your mates are moving forward. But Abraham obeyed God alone. The Bible says, look unto Abraham your father. Look up Sarah your mother. He was God alone. Yet, he obeyed God alone. No wonder God was pleased with him. No wonder he had a good report from the Lord. I have been a pastor for a while. People can be very fervent when they post them to do NYC in Zafara. They come back with a pregnancy or they backslide or something happen because it's very easy when you're in a cluster of believers to do well, when you're alone. And the real person that you are, you are what you are when you're alone. Abraham obeyed God alone, not corporately. I pray for you in the name of Jesus that from this morning, within the short time that we have, you will walk in strange obedience. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4, the Bible says the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but they are mighty through God, pull down strongholds. In verse 5, the Bible says, casting down arguments or imagination, and every eye did that exalt itself against the knowledge of God. You see, anything that contravenes what God says, you cast it down, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of the word of God. And verse 6 is what I like. I'm being ready to punish all disobedience when your own obedience is complete. Pastor, I'm from a polygamous family. When your obedience is complete, you will shut down. And because there's no polygamy without witchcraft. If you like, doubt it. Somebody will do just to somebody. If not now, it will happen later. You know, a woman cried to one of my mentors and said, very rich man, when he passed, the children started doing just to each other who will get the inheritance. The man wrote a willow. They start. They fought until almost half of them died. Polygamy comes with witchcraft. I pray in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Amen. When your obedience is complete, you will shut down, you will punish every disobedience. That is why people don't have to monitor your hand. Where do you stay? What do you do? What job do you do? You can't want to obey God and be doing the business you're not proud of. You can't want to obey God and come to the church and give what belongs to Caesar to Caesar, give what belongs to God to God, and on Monday you resume. No, it doesn't work that way. 
You will open yourself up to demons. You will create a ladder for the enemy to come to, into your life. From today, you will enter and enjoy strange open doors. Amen. Can that amen be louder? Amen. Abraham had in-laws. Abraham had brothers. Abraham had sister-in-laws. Abraham had uncles. In case you are saying, Pastor Biodo, you know, Nigeria is hard. Pastor Biodo, these are the people that you are going, you see, people that have gone to heaven before us, their award was not given to them. The day of their award is coming. God says, sit down, just sit down. Others are still coming. The syllabus that we use, there's no syllabus for uh, uh, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they say, no, 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 no. You know, Pastor Biodon lived in 2024. Let's lower the standard. No. Did you notice when Jesus Christ was alive, he did not lower the standard for anybody that he called to be his disciple. Some of them, he called them, he said, follow me. He said, please, let me go and talk to my father. Let me bid them goodbye. No, he moved on. Some, some people he called, he said, uh, uh, follow me. He said, please, let me first of all go and bury my father. He said, let the spiritually dead bury the physically dead. He did not lower his standard. There was a day he preached a message and Peter showed up. He said, ah, you didn't go to. He said, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. He didn't lower his standard because he came to, 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 to give an example of what will happen in heaven. You say, Pastor Biodo, you know the job I do, you know, man must survive. Abraham had, you can't appreciate uh, the sacrifices of Abraham until you understood. You have that understanding of what Abraham went through. He was a human being. He had the same constitution. He had, he went through the same thing you are going through right now. In Genesis 11, if I read from verse 22, Genesis 11, verse 22. Genesis 11, verse 22. Serug lived 30 years and begot now. Serug was the great-grandfather of Abraham. In case they ask you in any competition, who is the great-grandfather of Abraham? Say Serug. Now you know it in Koza. In verse 23, are you alive? And Nahor, after he begot Nahor, Serug lived 200 years and begot sons and daughters. So what does that tell you? Abraham had a great-grandfather, had a grandfather called Nahor. If you read verse 24, the Bible says in verse 24, Nahor lived 29 years and begot Terah. Terah was the father of Abraham. The first child he would have in his life, he had it when he was 29 years. What does that tell you? There was barrenness in the lineage of Abraham. Are you following what I'm saying? Now, in verse 25, the Bible says in verse 25, after he begot Terah, Nahor lived 119 years and begot sons and daughters. And the Bible says in verse 26, now Terah lived 70 years and begot Abraham, Nahor and Hara. Now, have you noticed that he... There's a name called Abraham. There's a name called Nahor. That Nahor was because his father died. So when he gave back to a child, that tells you that Abraham lived before Nahor, the grandfather died. Come on, talk to me. So Abraham witnessed many burial ceremonies. The reason why Abraham's father, Terah, named the second born Nahor was Babatunde. My father came again. What do they call it in your dialect? Anybody? I know you want to do like you don't understand your language. This goes out. Wake up. Come on. Ibo, what do you call Baba today? Nana. He named him Nana. So he was real, natural like you. Okay? And he gave birth to Ara. Are you alive? In verse 27. In verse 27. This is, I didn't ask what you call it now, sir. Anybody? Ausa? I heard on Friday it was called Ada. Eh? Akba. <laughs> I need to learn it. Yes? Anybody stand up, tell me. 
say, Akba, you say, Abba. I need to learn it. Anybody? If you are bold, say it. Rise to your face. I want to see. Abba. Spell it. A double B. Anybody in front? A double B. A. Like Abba in Hebrew. Okay. Abba. Abba. Because Abba means father in Hebrew. Amen? That, that should, I'm sure that's Aramic. They borrowed it from, yeah. So 28, um, Genesis 11, 20. This is the genealogy of Terah. Terah begot Abraham, now and Haran. But Aaron begot Lot. So Lot is not a friend of Abraham. Now, by natural custom, are you alive? I left the room. By natural custom, Lot should not be the first grandchild if Abraham had a child. So Lot is not Abraham's friend. Lot was last, last small boy. Now, if you, you, don't, you don't get the meaning of this until you read verse 28. In verse 28, the Bible says, and Aaron died before his father, Terah. So Abraham, um, Terah had Abraham, Nahor, and Haran. But Haran died. But before Aaron died, Aaron gave birth to Lot. The reason why you don't, you don't hear about the mother of Lot was because, basically, if Aaron was the first child, Abraham would have inherited Lot's wife and Lot's mother. But you don't inherit your, your younger brother's wife. So I can just imagine, can you allow me to imagine that Lot's mother just dropped Lot and walked away. I have to restart my life. Nahor cannot marry me. Abraham cannot marry me. I have, to, I have to walk out of the family. There's no other child again. Talk to me, somebody. You will not appreciate the faith of Abraham until you understood fully where, it's, where it was coming from. Are you following what I'm saying? By faith, that guy made a move and God marked it that this guy is righteous. It's a high level of trust. Child of God, are you here this morning? You're not obeying God. Because, oh yeah, Pastor Bionne, please, we are human. Ah, I'm running to so 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 age. I don't have a child. I don't have this. I don't have that. Have you moved from faith to trust? You see, sometimes we disobey God and turn around to play the victim. And the person you are dealing with, all things are naked. In fact, the first thing they will play for you when you get to heaven is to play, play the video of how you lived your life. You can't lie. So you can be here and be saying, God, I've saved you. They will plead. You will see yourself. You can't lie. All I know, I don't know why Ananas and Sapphira died. All I know is that God is love. All I know is that God is faithful. Faithful is he that has promised and he will do it. Yes, see, if he didn't fail Abraham, he won't come in 21st century and fail you. See, you will not be the first. Your circumstance is not big enough for God to refuse to be God. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Yeah. What I know is that this month, you are walking in open doors. Yeah. Former things have come to pass. New things will begin to happen to you. Yeah. If you believe it, shout amen three times, somebody. If you look at that verse I told you to turn into in Genesis 11, I think we're in verse 27 now. Aaron died, 28. Aaron died before his father, Terah, in his lift, native land, and in all of the Chaldees. So guess who looked after Lot? Abraham, as a child. He was there when they gave back to him. In the same house, he grew up. Sarah should have been older than, her, than him. But because she was barren. In verse 29, the, the 30, the Bible says, but Sarah was barren. She had no child. She had no child. So when the Bible says in chapter, chapter 12, because I want to talk about Sarah a lot, 
In chapter 12, Genesis verse 1. Are you alive? Get out of your family. What? From your father's house. What? To a land I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Does that make sense? Someone that does not have a child, there's death. How many burial has been has it been to? Come on, talk to me. Uh, follow me the way I am dissecting the Bible. How many burial has it been to? In fact, in verse 31 of Genesis 11, his father died. In Aaron, his father died. He's seen burial. He's seen he, that, that person should even doubt God, even though they were worshiping heights, worshiping moon. But God said, get out. Okay, if I will get out, I should leave Lot. Don't take any of your family members. Ah, no, no, no. I, <laughs> God, you know what happened? Lot began to misbehave. Abraham had to let go. Any aspect that you don't obey God, as time goes on, you will discover that God sees the end from the beginning. You can imagine, Lot never argued with Abraham because they raised him up. But the servants of Lot and the servants of Abraham were contending. Abraham was smart. He knew that Lot was being smart around him. He said, Lot, I know you are not called, but take any place you like. And Lot looked and took the plain, a place that was well watered like the garden of the Lord. He took the place. You can imagine when Lot and the, the, the servants, the left to take the place, they would have said, ha, ah, wow. Because there's no way Lot will have a place that the servants will have places. Wow. Ah, oh God, it's good to reveal you. <laughs> Look at us today. Look at us. When we were with Abraham, did we have all this? Look at what has happened. Sometimes when you say someone is doing well, wait a minute. Don't judge anything before it's time. Are you following what I'm saying? And I hope you don't take that message wrong. I'm, I'm here to let you know that there's nothing like staying in the center of God's will for you. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Child of God, who if you, if you stood somewhere and say, look at that, my friend, he's doing well. How do you know he's doing well? Sometimes they are off God's radar. Sometimes they have, they have broken, they have, they have gone away from the of the Lord. They've gone from the plans of the Lord. You say, they're doing well. What did you see? They have money. They use cars. If you are the devil, how will you plan for that person? Sometimes the devil attacks you with lack, sometimes with plenty. I pray, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Nothing of the enemy shall survive around you. The voice of the stranger you will never follow. Can that amen be louder? Can that amen be louder? I said, you will not follow the voice of the devil. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God told him to get out. It doesn't make sense. A man without a child, he said he will make him the father of many nations. How? I even, you've not given me a child. You have, you have promised me a, a nation. You said I should go out. So when, when the Bible says in Hebrews 11, verse 8, that Abraham, by faith, moved. He obeyed the law. When he was called to receive an inheritance somewhere, a place that God did not tell him. If you don't know the background, you will not understand what he went through. In Genesis 22, because of time, Genesis 22, I want to read from verse 1. The Bible says, and it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said, Abraham said, here I am. In verse 2, he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, and go and offer him. Not just what you, where you want, in a mountain I will tell you of. God was teaching him obedience. Don't just go and offer him where you want. You know, there are people that, you know, <laughs> they feel, yeah, I can give anywhere I want. I can, I can put my tithe anywhere I want, you know. <laughs> there, there is a mentor of mine. I just asked him a random question many years ago, about 20 years ago. I said, how do you handle your tithe, sir? He said, oh, my tithe. I just save it up. And in December, I carry my friends 
to a resort and we blew it. I'm telling you a true story. When I left his presence, God told me we enter trouble. And he did. He did. Don't just do what you want to do. Don't be wise in your own eyes. Follow what God says to do. Follow what God says to do. Hallelujah. Say after me, I walk in strange obedience. And my victory is guaranteed. My victory is guaranteed. In the name of Jesus. Because of time, go to verse 15. Because of time, you can read the rest at home. Genesis 22 down. Now, when they got to the place, oh, I love what the Bible says. Abraham, don't think God just told him, take Isaac, your son, your only son, and sacrifice him. I said, yes, sir. Isaac, follow me. No. That guy might have fainted, fainted because God was specific. Don't take Ishmael. He had 318 servants. Don't take any one of them. Your son, your only son, and God was specific, whom you love. Whom you love. And go and sacrifice him, not as a meat offering, a burnt offering. In the mountain, I will tell you of. It's not what you think. It's not what you want. I call the shot. Some people don't have a problem with instructions, but how will you say this, this, this? God, God said, I want a coat. Go to the mount, go to the village opposite. The coat that nobody has ridden on. Some people don't know that dimension. It's okay to have two cars and give the one that is tired. <laughs> but how can you say God said, or God is, the devil is ministering to me as you give him that one is mentioning. Is That's not God. It's God. God is specific. Go and read Exodus 25 to 40. God told Moses, I want this amount of gold. I want this amount of silver. I want this, 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 this. this. Go and read chapter 40. When they did it, Moses could not enter the temple. The glory came. Those who came late to church could not enter. The glory came. The reason why the glory, you're not seeing the glory, glory is not smoke, is the royalty of God, is the splendor of God. When we obey God, when we do what he wants, those things will come. We don't need to pray for glory. I pray in the name of Jesus. This is the month you will walk in strange open doors. In the name of Jesus. If you love me, do what I say. If you obey me, if you obey me, things will happen for you. Things will happen for you. Things will happen for you. Amen. So God told Moses and God told Abraham in Genesis 22, 15. The angel called. He took. Abraham was, 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 had, had made up his mind to kill that boy. He took the angel to call. He took the angel calling him three times not to kill that boy. So you thought God just told him, Abraham, take Isaac. Go ask, and Abraham just said, Isaac. Follow me, Sarah. We are going for three days. We'll be back. No. Can you just imagine that this guy fainted? God woke him up with water. Well, eh? I want your son, your only son. Women, in the, because men may not understand. If Abraham had told Sarah, Sarah, the child you used many years to receive, your only child, that your house help, Hagar, abused you, taunted you. God said, I should kill him. <laughs> said, I will put that child behind. I said, oh, no, she, you and that your God. <laughs> Abraham woke up early in the morning before Sarah. Do you know how early women wake up? He woke up early in the morning and... The split wood was there. The fire was there because in those days there were no matches. If you don't take fire, if you didn't take fire from home, you won't have fire for your sacrifice. Knife was there. Even the boy asked, where's the sacrifice? Abraham said, the Lord will provide. <laughs> he left the house with two slaves. The one slave was pushing one slave in front because they were sure the man will not sacrifice his son. It will be one of us. Hey! 
Walk faster. I said, you, you too, walk faster. Hey! But I came before you. He said, you must go before me. So when Abraham saw the place afar off, I said, young lad, wait here. Hey! I and, the, and, and the young man will go to the yonder place and worship and come. They said, if you like, don't come back. They sat down. A little girl came to see me on, on Thursday or so. One of the uh, children of one of the leaders. Out of all the questions, she asked me, said, Pastor Biodu, what did Abraham tell his son? And he was tying him and he didn't argue. And I told the young girl, Isaac was 27 years old. I also am thinking, that's a standard I'm trying to walk towards. That boy trusted his father. Even to the point of death. What has God, ex God, what has God told you to do? It won't even bring blood out of you. You don't want to do it. No, my life, uh, me, uh, my belief. My belief. Now when you have a problem with your belief, <laughs> you will say, God, I've saved you. You will turn around. Are you following what I'm saying? In Hebrews 11, 17, quickly. Hebrews 11, 17. I'm out of time. I need to close. The Bible says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac. Now, the question is, did he offer up Isaac? No. When he lifted up the knife, God said, Otito, Ozugo, I've accepted it. Shekena, I've accepted it. And he offered he who had, had received the promise offered up his holy begotten son. Verse 18 makes it serious. Of whom? Of whom it was said, in Isaac, your seed shall be called. He should have said, Father, I bind you. Because you said in this Isaac, I will prosper. You said you will bless me. Did you say your word? I will be the head and not the tail. Did you say your word? God said, do this, do that. Why did Abraham do that? In verse 19. Concluding. The problem is not what you do or what you don't do. The reason and the morale behind it is the problem. What do you conclude of God that is not faithful? What do you conclude of God that he lies? What do you conclude? We're going to read many versions. We're out of time, but quickly we'll read many versions. Concluding that God was able to raise him, even if he killed him, even from the dead. From which he received him in a figure, in a figurative sense. Uh, let's read message translation, verse 19, quickly. And Abraham figured, what are you figuring? What is going on through in the middle of your ears? What do you think about God? I love you, Lord. God does not accept by your words. What do you think? Why are you not a giver? You are thinking, huh? if I get this, <laughs> where will I get my rent to pay? That's why you are still struggling with your rent. Huh. You know, I can't write my exams if I pray. I have to sleep well. That's why you failed. Please, fill in the blanks. And don't judge me. Is a relationship God wants to build with you. You can't build relationship on your own terms. Okay? This man figured that God wanted to, and he could raise the dead. In a sense, that's what happened when he received Isaac back alive. You know, he told the young lad, I and the, uh, he told the, the slaves, I and the young lad will go to the yonder place to worship and come back. He knew you will come back. The reason you are disobeying is that you think you will not come back. Those who, those who go forth weeping or sowing seed will doubtless return with sheaves in their hand. Doubtless. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I'm out of time. I'm out of time. Can we read more, one more version? New Living Translation, quickly. New Living Translation, it was by faith Abraham offered up Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. 
Abraham who had received the promise. Read verse 19 because we don't have time. Verse 19. Verse 19. Quickly. The Bible says Abraham reasoned. What's your reasoning? That if Isaac died, God was able to bring him back to life again. In a sense, Abraham did receive his son back from the dead. Except the corn of wheat falls to the ground and die, he abides alone. That's why that thing is alone in your life. Because you don't want to put it down. Jesus said, I have the power to lay down my life and I have the power to take it. The reason why you're not being able to take is because you didn't lay down. What is that thing God has been telling you to lay down? Money is very easy to lay down. I'm not talking about money. What about that relationship? What about that, that thing God is telling you to do? Very hard. Ha! Huh? At what age? Pastor, my investment. And you know it's not good for you. You know that that is what is standing between you and what God wants to do in your life. Pray in the name of Jesus that God's will will stand in your life. In Job 36, verse 11, I need to close right now. Job 36, verse 11. If they listen, if they obey and serve me, they shall spend their days in prosperity and their years in pleasure. If you are not spending your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure, are you obeying and serving God? Some serve, they don't obey. Some obey, they don't serve. If you do the two, that's what will happen to you. I love the way the message translation says it. Message Bible says, if they obey and serve him, they'll have a good, long life on easy street. I pray for you, things will be easy for you. Yeah. Now, I want to start commanding. I want your amen to be loud. I said things will be easy for you. Yeah. I command your heavens to open. Yeah. May God give your, your earth rain in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Never again will you walk and labor in vain. Yeah. To every labor, the Bible says there is profit. Therefore, let there be profits in your life. Amen. Let your prophecy appear unto all. Amen. In John 151, John 151, I read that to you on prayer service days, John 151. I want to read the message translation of John 151. The Bible says in the message translation, John 151. Before this is over, you are going to see heaven open. I prophesy, before this is over, you will see heaven open. Amen. Particularly as we fast and pray together, and as we walk in that thing that God wants you to let go of. Some of you, I don't know what it is. You are holding on to things, and it's affecting several things that God wants to do in your life. You're not even walking the grace you're supposed to, to walk in anymore. The devil is happy. Because the cares of the world and all the other things have choked what should profit you. I pray in the name of Jesus, in this season, you'll come out strong. Amen. Now I pray, may God help you. Amen. May his face shine upon you. Amen. May you surprise your adversaries. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The thought by what they've done to you, by the divorce, by the challenge you've had, they, they thought your life would stop. Now I pray in the name of Jesus. You have just started. God will take you to a place of heights. God will take you to the place of envy. You shall be enviable. God will breathe upon you. I declare that your ground is soaked and wet. No more dryness in the name of Jesus. The time and the season of drought is over in your life. God will smile upon you. Listen to me, you will smile again. Amen. You will smile again. Amen. God will help you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The days of not having, they are over. Amen. The days of just enough, they are over. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God will guide your steps. Amen. God will guide your discretions. Amen. New things begin to happen to you. Amen. Former things have happened, new things will come to pass in your life. Before the spring forth, as God tells you, those things that will come to pass, 
and your part to play in the name of Jesus, the enemy will not abort what God, God wants to do in your life. And what God has perfected in your life. May God perfect everything that concerns you and show you salvation. So shall it be. Now I command that God that made a way in the middle of the sea will make a way for you. So shall it be. Some people, no matter how much you preach, what they want to do is what they will do. But those who raise up the knife and want to do what God says, even though God says, hey, I'm testing you. Receive the dividend. Let every, when your soul change, let everything change concerning you. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Say after me, say, Father, Father I heard your word I and I believe your word. I Today I confess Jesus Amen. as my Lord and as my Savior. I believe he came in the flesh. I believe he died on the cross. I believe that on the third day he was raised from the dead. Therefore, everything Jesus did by his death, burial, resurrection, and ascension. I receive today into my human spirit. I, I enjoy the gift of eternal life. From today, I'm born again. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' precious name. As you go, God goes with you. God perfects all that concerns you. This week, starting from today, you shall walk in total obedience. You know that half obedience is disobedience. Delayed obedience is rebellion. I pray in the name of Jesus. Even though you don't know the value of obedience when the rain comes, when the rain and the flood of uh, Noah came, that was when he knew why God had to use this kind of wood for the base of the ship, of the ark, the middle, this kind of wood, because the ark was designed to stand and to float. Some of you are in relationship right now. You don't, you don't know what marriage is. You've not been married before. Some of you, you've not had children before. God tells you, do this, do this, do this. You say, no, I'm wise in my own eyes. I've read books. I watch movies. <laughs> I pray that in the name of Jesus, your life shall be an example in your family. Amen. God will take you to the place of envy. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Say to your neighbor, say, surely, God's goodness and his mercy shall run after you all the days of your world. You will live, you will dwell, you will tarry in the presence of the Lord forever and ever and ever. Amen.